I'm here this morning to provide a brief history on the uh, residential development of the Albert Eden Local Board area. So I'll be covering 100 years. It's obviously a huge topic, so I'll really just be scratching the surface this morning, but hopefully you'll find it of interest. So let's begin with early subdivisions and land use. So the subdivision of land all began in 1840 when Auckland was made the capital of the province. 3,000 acres of land in Tamaki Makoto was purchased from Ngāti Whātua by the Crown. Another 2,000 acres of land was acquired the following year, which captured much of what we know today as the Albert Eden Local Board area. So the land purchased by the Crown was surveyed and subdivided into rural tracts to be sold to European settlers, primarily for agricultural use. During the early 1840s, the Mount Eden area was subdivided into 74 Crown allotments that enabled farming in the hinterland surrounding the town of Auckland. Most of the allotments were sold to the public at a series of auctions in the 1840s and 50s, purchased by, e by individuals either as long-term farming ventures or as a means to generate a swift speculative profit. In addition to the establishment of farms, the land from Epsom through to Remuera was also used to create what might be known as country estates. These gave wealthy Aucklanders an attractive place to live away from the less desirable locations of town, but within a convenient carriage ride of their place of business. These estates often comprised grand and elaborate residences set within landscape gardens, a real sign um, of their owners' uh, wealth and prosperity. So we can see a couple of image, uh, a couple of these country um, estates peppering the Epsom landscape here in this 19th century image. A number of small residential subdivisions were also being promoted at this time. The earliest was in Epsom, a 33-lot subdivision in 1845. Other examples included a 200-lot subdivision in Waterview and a 70-lot subdivision on the northern slopes of Mount Eden. So what type of houses were being built during this time? Well, some of the oldest houses in the Albert Eden Local Board area ranged from simply built cottages, like we can see here, uh, that were often at the centre of small farms, to um, elaborate residences complemented by landscape gardens. Many of these early dwellings have sadly long gone, including the three here, but some still exist as important remnants of this early period of European settlement in Albert Eden. Let's just like, take a look at a couple of examples of those that still stand. We have three stone dwellings at the top of the slide here, dating from the 1840s and 1860s um, on Manuk, in Manuk, um, on Manukau Road and Mount Eden Road. Then the uh, country estates, we have um, Clifton down the bottom left there, um, a Gothic revival style uh, gentleman's residence built in the 1860s, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Alberton here, the colonial mansion in Mount Albert, built in 1863. So the Victorian era. The Victorian era was a period of significant population growth and really marked the commencement of suburban development in Auckland. As population grew, the need for housing inevitably increased. People were keen to move out of the overcrowded central area to new suburban locations that were believed to offer a healthier place to live. Land speculators were quick to capitalise on this demand, buying up the Crown allotments for subdivision. And whilst much of the Albert Eden area was still used for agricultural purposes, by the 1880s, vast um, areas of its farmland were in the process of being subdivided for suburban residential use. During this time, hundreds of residential subdivisions were recorded. Some were small with just 10 lots, while others were expansive tracts of land with well over 100 lots. The first areas to be subdivided were often those closest to town or along the main transport routes, such as New North Road, Dominion Road and Mount Eden Road. 
Commercial development often accompanied this residential growth, with shopping centres being built along the main roads to provide new residents with services and provisions. So in the Albert Eden area, some of the key residential subdivisions during this period included a 400 lot subdivision either side of Kingsland Avenue, a subdivision in Morningside following the arrival of the railway station in the early 1880s, a 108 lot subdivision in Point Chev, and a 44 lot subdivision um, in Mount Albert known as the Benfield Estate. Nearly all uh, were promoted um, as using catchy names and idyllic descriptions. And one such example is the Edenside estate on Mount Eden Road, which was advertised as um, having convenient homestead uh, sites with volcanic soil, pure air, a fine view, a bracing atmosphere, as well as being pleasant and healthful. And it is on these new residential sites that the new house of the Victorian era was built, the villa. The villa survives as the archetypal house form of early Auckland and dominated housing in New Zealand during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The villa form evolved over 50 years, having its roots in the tradition of colonial architecture that we share with other British colonies such as Australia and India. In Albert Eden, the villa represents the first wave of large-scale residential construction in the area. The majority were built of timber, with walls clad in weatherboards, with corrugated roofs and brick chimneys. Now, a number of brick and concrete villas were also built during this time, but they are less common in the Albert Eden area. So let's take a look at the villa types. There were many villa types, the most basic of which was the square-fronted villa. These were often of square plan with a veranda at the front and a lean-to at the rear. Inside, the, hall, the villa used what was known as a hall and parlour plan with all the main rooms accessed off a central hallway. From this basic form, the villa could be expanded to make larger homes. Plans were elongated, bays were added, verandas were reconfigured and the location of windows and doors changed. The options were almost endless but could be categorised into several clear types. In Albert Eden, uh, the most common villa types were, and still are, the square-fronted villa, the single bay villa, and the corner bay villa, which can be seen in these lovely old photographs here. Almost all faced the street with the more formal rooms at the front and the family rooms at the back. So let's just take a look at some examples of these villa types in the Albert Eden area. So we can see that they range from the relatively simple square-fronted villa at the top left there in, on um, Dominion Road to the more elaborate corner angled bay villa um, in Mount Eden, on Mount Eden Road. So moving on to the Edwardian era. The early 20th century saw the arrival of the electric tram service to Auckland, which was introduced by the Auckland Electric Tramways Company in 1902. The trams proved to have a significant effect on the Albert Eden area, which experienced rapid growth and suburban development along the tram routes. So, oh, sorry. So where were the first stops? Actually, this image here is worth, worth looking at now. Kingsland was actually the first neighbourhood in the Albert Eden area to receive trams, with the line reaching Page's store there in 1903. The Kingsland line reached Morningside in 1912 and later Mount Albert in 1915. In Mount Eden, tram lines opened on both Dominion and Mount Eden roads in 1908 and extended to Balmoral Road around 1914. In the eastern half of the Albert Eden area, development was influenced by the Onihanga tram line, which opened along Manukau Road in 1903 to serve Epsom. The success of the tram network coincided with a residential building boom in Auckland just before the First World War, which resulted in an incredible increase in the number of houses constructed in the Albert Eden area. Mount Eden was actually the fastest growing Auckland suburb during this period. It was also a time of new ideas and attitudes towards architecture and city planning. 
the garden city and arts and crafts movements imported from Britain and America, for example, had a great influence on Auckland's residential development patterns. Elaborated Wardian style villas soon started appearing along the streets of the Albert Eden area, and it also marked the introduction of the transitional villa. So what is a transitional villa? Sometimes regarded as the final flowering of the villa style, the transitional villa was a new hybrid that heralded the movement towards bungalow living. In the Albert Eden area, they typically get date from 1910 to 1915, coinciding with the building boom before the First World War. So how do they differ from the Victorian villa? Well, whilst the transitional villa retains the general form and layout of the villa, it incorporates a number of bungalow features. Um, such as exposed rafter feet, casement windows, and a reduced level of ornamentation. Some are still firmly rooted in the villa style, as shown in the bottom two photographs here, with subtle differences in decoration and features such as the continuation of the main roof over the veranda, while others exhibit very strong bungalow influences, which can be seen in the top two photographs here. The interwar period. A housing shortage after the First World War caused another construction boom in Auckland in the early 1920s. Suburban housing was also increasingly sought after for the more spacious living conditions, particularly following the spread of the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. The Albert Eden local board area was ideally suited to meet these demands, so the progress of subdivision and suburban development continued rapidly during the interwar period. In the whole of New Zealand, it was Mount Albert that experienced the fastest rate of building in the 1920s, with one and a half houses built every week. <laughs> Subdivisions con continued to follow the expanding tram network. A new tram line was added on Sandringham Road in 1925, and the Dominion Road, Mount Eden Road and New North Road lines extended between 1929 and 1932. This amplified the housing trends that began before the war, pushing suburban development southward with each new tram stop. In Point Chevalier, the tram finally arrived in 1930, which was a major catalyst for residential development in the area. The suburb had been slow to develop in the early years, but finally began to blossom in the interwar period. Improved infrastructure, extensive subdivision and associated population growth saw early farms replaced by rows of houses, and the area became popular as a seaside destination. So what housing types are associated with the interwar period? Well, there are several architectural styles um, that dominated the period, but nearly all were variations of the bungalow form. So let's first take a look at the bungalow. In the Albert Eden area, bungalows generally fall into two categories, the Californian bungalow and the English bungalow. The Californian bungalow was strongly influenced by popular American housing trends of the time and became the dominant housing type in the 1920s and 30s. They generally feature a low slung form with shallow pitched roof and wide eaves with exposed rafter feet and often had deep porches and bay windows. Although generally built of timber, there was an emphasis on the use of handcrafted and rustic materials such as shingles and brick and stone, which um, was often incorporated into their design. Internally, they had a far more informal open plan layout when compared to the villa. <coughs> So here you can see some examples of Californian bungalows that exist in the Albert Eden area, showing the variety of their designs. So we've got examples here from Mount Albert, Balmoral and Point Chevalier. By the 1930s, the Californian bungalow uh, was joined by the simpler English influence bungalow, also known as the bungalow cottage. The large porches and layered gable configuration of the Californian bungalow gave way to buildings with little or no ornamentation. They had projecting box windows with leaded and faceted glass and shallow hipped roofs with boxed eaves. The state houses of the 1940s share many similarities with these later English bungalows. Again, let's take a look at some examples here. 
These are mainly from Point Chevalier and Balmoral. Then there were the eclectic styles. <clears throat> By the 1930s, the English cottage, Spanish mission and art deco styles, often regarded as eclectic styles, also appeared. Although less prolific than the bungalows, they did, and still do, add variety and interest to the streetscapes of the Albert Eden local board area. The English cottage was probably the most common of these new styles, which displayed influences of both arts and crafts and Tudor revival styles imported from Britain and America. The style can be seen in large architect design homes in the likes of Epsom and Mount Eden, but were also applied to a small bungalow form, which can be seen throughout the area. And there are some good examples in Balmoral. They often had steeply pitched roofs, half timber in, brick and or plaster clad in, and tall chimneys. The Spanish mission style was inspired by early Spanish missions in California, while the Art Deco style first emerged in France before the First World War. In New Zealand, the styles offered an alternative to the interwar bungalow and often alluded to modernity or the exotic. They became widely used, particularly during, um, following the Napier earthquake in 1931. Whilst both styles were generally constructed of stucco walls, Spanish mission buildings often featured gabled roofs with terracotta tiles and were decorated with arches and columns. In contrast, the Arc Deco style had a more sleek, linear appearance with flat roofs behind parapet walls and stylized geometric ornamentation. The Spanish Mission and Art Deco styles were often applied to the purpose-built blocks of flats, which provided a new way of living during the interwar era and were regarded as symbols of progress and sophistication. Spanish Mission and Art Deco style flats became increasingly popular in the Albert Eden area during this period, particularly in Mount Eden. And by 1940, at the close of Albert Eden's first uh, residential, 100 years of residential development, they had become an important theme in its housing history and marked a tr transition in the way that people began to live. Kia ora, thank you.